back here at the National Firearms Museum here at NRA headquarters in beautiful, today rainy, Fairfax, Virginia, with my good friend, Phil Schreier. Phil, as usual, you've given me very little intel on these segments because I like it like that, but enough to know that I'm gonna call this series Phil's Grab Bag. You said you got some interesting stuff, you put it together, and you're going to surprise me. So what's the first thing we have in your grab bag, sir? Well, John, the first thing in the grab bag is a, another graphic that we're going we're gonna to talk about. Oh, do you recognize that picture at all? Oh, wow. Or the gun that's in it? I know I've, I've seen this picture before, you but see. I can't think where I've seen it. Well, that was taken in the, uh, in the Dallas Police Department on uh, November 22nd, 1963. And uh, he's holding up a, a Carcano uh, oh. uh, rifle that was uh, found in the school book depository. Wow. Now, the interesting thing uh, about this gun and why we have it on the show today is because not only is this an exact copy of uh, the one that was uh, used back then, 50 years ago, uh, but this particular gun uh, was used by a gentleman named uh, Dr. John K. Latimer of New Jersey. Uh, in coordination with testimony he gave to the House Select Committee on Assassinations in 1978. Wow. And this was one of the guns uh, uh, configured identical with all the original parts to the other uh, Carcano uh, that was used to uh, duplicate not only the firing sequence but also the ballistic uh, trajectory and, and wounds. And how many times, Phil, has that whole thing been recreated, but this one was for the House Select Committee on Assassination. So this is, on its own, a historical firearm. That's right. And Dr. Latimer wrote about uh, this gun in his book uh, on Kennedy and Lincoln, a, a book he put together, uh, published, I believe, in the 90s. He died not too long ago at the age of 92. Uh, and the, uh, the whole reason why I was thinking about this, not only because of the anniversary, right. Dr. Latimer came to mind when we found a number of his items that were coming up for auction and, uh, at Thomas Del Mar in London on December 4th. So we, uh, we, we were reminded of that and brought out more items from the collection that we had here. Now, if you go online and you start to do a lot of research uh, on the particular gun, uh, or if you watched a lot of the... Uh, uh, commemorative uh, programs, uh, you may have noticed that the very first reports said that a Mauser rifle had been found on the sixth floor, and uh, that was obviously incorrect. Uh, the photograph that, uh, you know, the graphic we supply shows the actual gun is a, uh, what they call a 91 slash 38 Italian Carcano. Right. Not a Manlicher Carcano, which is what the National Archives still calls the gun. It's, yeah, that's the way I've heard it referred to. Right? The, the, Incorrect. The, yeah, the Warren Commission, everybody wrong. It's just an Italian Carcano Model 1891 slash 38. Um, and it's called 9138. It's based on the original 1891 action, uh, shortened in 1938. Uh, this is not a military scope. It's identical to the one that Kleins put on the guns when they shipped them from Chicago. It says Ordnance Optics, Hollywood, California, as did all the, you know, the original. This gun uh, has the markings on the breech, uh, that it was made at the Royal Armory at Torini in 1940, same as the original. Wow. Uh, so this is the same year, place of manufacture, 6.5 Carcano ammunition. Uh, Dr. Latimer was a very interesting individual. He collected, uh, he collected all kinds of bizarre Americana, including... Uh, you know, items uh, he, like he had Charles Lindbergh's uh, goggles from when he flew mm -hmm. across the Atlantic. He had pretty cool. Uh, well, our, our, our viewing audience home can uh, Google Dr. Latimer and Napoleon <laughs> and find out what an ad part of his anatomy that he also had. In the, uh, All right, as soon as we break, I'm going to go do that. Okay. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Dr. Latimer was a great guy, a urologist of great note, and a, uh, a witness to the uh, 1978. House Select Committee on Assassinations, wow. where he used this gun to recreate uh, the timing sequence, wow. ability, accuracy, and ballistic wounds caused by a Carcano in 6.5 wow. caliber. That's one of those goosebump things, just looking at that gun, seeing that photograph and thinking about it. Wow, that's pretty cool stuff. And that's here 
It's here at the National Firearms so you Museum. You know what that means. You know what I'm leading to, Phil. We, you can you visit. You gotta us. see it. You can visit us <laughs> off, off Interstate 66 at the uh, intersection of Route 50. Uh, that's seven days a week, uh, 9:30 to 5. Admission is free, and there's plenty of free parking as always. Uh, if there wasn't, John would make me go visit him instead That's of right. coming here. You don't know that. Yeah. I'm, I'm parked right out front. I know. It's raining, you know. And if you can't visit us off the uh, interstate, visit us on the internet at nramuseum.com. That's awesome. You need to get as close as I am to these firearms, whether it's on the internet or here, come and see them because it's just to know that, that what you're holding in your hands is it's such a significant piece of history and to be able to come and see that, look at the scope, look at the, the inscription, you got to come see that here at the Firearms Museum. Now, I if you're traveling for the holidays, uh, you know we're open right here in Washington, D.C. Uh, if you're hanging out in the Ozarks with uh, any relatives over the holidays, make sure you visit us at the National Sporting Arms Museum in Springfield, Missouri uh, at the Bass Pro Center. Thank you so much. Another great installment here at the Curator's Corner on NRA News Cam & Company here on Sportsman Channel. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, John.